What is going on everyone? My name is Abe Labanetti. We're here at the Bodybuild.com headquarters. I'm a Bodybuild.com and muscle tech athlete. Today I'm going to run you through a live shoulder workout. But first, I want to let you know that muscle tech and Bodybuild.com has an amazing deal on some protein. Right now they got buy two, get one free of the NitroTech Whey Gold. So if you want to check that out, just go down below in the chat and it's going to be a link down there. Just click on that. So first off, we're gonna be starting off with seated military dumbbell press. You wanna warm up those shoulders a good bit before going into some heavy weight. We're, we're gonna be doing five sets here. So I'm just gonna grab like the 50 pound dumbbells just to start off. Cause like I said, you wanna warm up those shoulders because you don't wanna have any injuries. We're just gonna, we're not gonna to go to failure here. You're just gonna go get some blood in those shoulders. So I'm here with bodybuilding.com. We have been filming all kinds of different workouts, actually six workouts that's gonna be coming up later on. Super tough workouts, very high volume. And then I'm also here filming a program. It's an ab program. So it's gonna be 30 days, uh, my 30 day ab program. It's gonna be great. So be looking for that when it comes out. Whew, okay, that was the first warm up set. I also like to do uh, some rotator cuff stuff because uh, over the years I've kind of had some rotator cuff issues so I like doing some kind of warm-up uh, with that just doing some external rotations all right and then let's jump in a little bit heavier weight I'm gonna go with uh, the 70 pounds this is gonna be another warm-up set I normally do around three warm-up sets before going into the first working set, which will be around uh, 12 reps. All right, so nothing to failure. I want to put these out in front because the last set of the five sets is gonna be a double drop set. So my goal here for the reps, first set's gonna be 12, and then we're gonna be doing 10, eight, eight, and then the last set will be six uh, reps, and then we're gonna do a double drop set. So my plan right now, depending on how strong I'm feeling, it depends on the day, and I just did shoulders two days ago, filmed it. So my plan is gonna be going for the six reps, 100 pounds, then dropping it down to the 70s for another maybe six reps, just going to complete failure on the drops. And then I'll be going down to, let's see, maybe the 60s or the 50s. We'll just see how many reps I can get with those. So this one right here is gonna be the first working set I'm gonna grab the 90s, try to bang out 12 reps here. Not quite 12, that's okay. Uh, whew. Whew. Shoulders are lit. YouTube would like to know what supplements you take. All right, what supplements do I take? All right, so let's go with pre-workout. Depending on how I'm feeling, uh, if I'm drained, if I don't feel great, don't feel like going to the gym, I'll take a pre-workout. Uh, I take VaporX 5 from Muscle Tech. Take that about 15 minutes prior to a workout. And then throughout the workout, I will take BCAs, take Amino Build, and that will help with endurance throughout the workout. 
uh, and helps to uh, really help the muscle recover as well. And then after the workout, I take five grams of creatine and then take a good protein powder just to absorb quick, quickly in those muscles to help recovery. And then throughout the workout, I bring a gallon of water because I drink a lot of water throughout my workouts. I'll drink anywhere from half a gallon to a gallon of water throughout my workouts. YouTube, um, Alex would like to know if we are actually live right now. Yes, Alex, we're live. We're very much alive here. And if we weren't, you know, I could be picking the 100 pound dumbbells up and resting for five minutes and make it look easy, but we're live, so that's, <laughs> we're taking, I'm gonna, ideal when I rest periods, if anyone wants to know about rest periods, I typically, throughout my workouts, rest for around 60 to 90 seconds uh, for the most part. And then later on throughout the workout, when I'm going into more, um, you know, isolating and lighter weight, I will only rest for around 45 seconds to get as much blood in the muscle as possible. All right, so I'm not feeling all that strong right now. The, the hundreds I will say for the last set. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the 90s again and try to get around 10 to eight this set. Because of course, when you uh, start doing more sets, your body's gonna uh, get more fatigue. So the weight that you started off with that you could get maybe 12 reps of, if you do another set, you might be ending up with you know 10 to eight reps just because your muscles are getting a little bit more fatigued. So let's go at this again. Reps right there. Woo. It's exhausting. Facebook says, Love your YouTube. How do you normally film when not with BBCom? Say that again. How do you normally film your workouts for YouTube when not with BBCom? Oh, not with BBCom. Uh, when on my YouTube channel. Oh, and you can follow me over my social medias. Um, Facebook is Abel Abinetti. And YouTube, it's Abel Albanetti. Instagram, it's Abel Body Gym. But how I film my YouTube videos when I'm not with Bodybuilding.com or have a professional crew to film me, uh, I actually have my friends, workout buddies, and stuff film me at the gym. And a lot of my videos are vlogs. So I'm actually filming myself. I edit all my content on my own. Uh, so it's just a lot of work but it's something I love doing. Editing is a lot of fun for me and filming because uh, I love going out there and just creating stuff and videos is how I kind of express that. So uh, I really enjoy uh, filming and stuff. So yeah, all right. So that was the second working set. Uh, let's go with the third one here. I'm gonna do the exact same weight. Let's do this again. So. For the beginning of my workouts, I like to get the compound movements in and go pretty heavy. Uh, so that is when I'm going to be doing like, you know, if I'm working chest, it's going to be a heavy bench press. Or with legs, I'm going to be doing squats heavy. And this particular day is going to be heavy dumbbell shoulder press. Uh, and then later on throughout the workout, you will see that we're going to go into more reps and go for more isolation movements. <sighs> These are getting heavier 
and heavier. So right now, I'm cutting, uh, trying to lose body fat, so I'm in a calorie deficit. So my strength has been slowly declining throughout my prep. Uh, so I'm trying to maintain it as much, much as possible because if you're in a cut, you're slowly gonna be losing strength and, and you have potential losing uh, muscle. That is not what I'm trying to do. So I'm trying to lift as heavy as possible while I'm in a cutting phase, trying to keep my muscle size. One random guy from YouTube asks, bro, can you ask him one more time if this is live, if this is live or not, and what advice do you have for a hard gainer? Uh, <laughs> random guy, this is live, <laughs> believe me. <laughs> so what advice do I have for a hard gainer? So I've always been a hard gainer ever since I was a teenager. I had to work so hard to put on size, and my best advice for any hard gainers out there uh, guys, it's gonna have to, it comes down to your diet and it comes down to working out extremely hard so that the nutrients that you're eating goes into those muscles to help rebuild. Uh, I was eating a lot of calories, so I would go work out when I was younger, very long. I mean, I would work out for an hour and a half to two hours a day back then. And then I would go eat high calorie foods. I mean, hamburgers, all that stuff, just to get as much calories in as possible. Now, when I got older, I had to kind of, you know, watch my diet a whole lot more because my, metal my metabolism slowed up. So now I eat, you know, a good bit amount of calories, but it's all like healthier calories and stuff. But when you're like a teenager and really hard gaining, you have to eat a lot of calories. That can be from pasta, uh, hamburgers, all that stuff, just to get in the amount of calories and even, um, Weight gainer shakes can help a whole lot for people that is, you know, really hard to gain, uh, you know, size or weight. Fazil from YouTube would like to know what kind of food you recommend after workouts. Food I recommend after a workout. Uh, I take a protein shake right after a workout, so like 15 minutes straight after, and then I will eat a solid meal about an hour after having that protein shake. Uh, the meals I like to consume afterwards, that's when, I, that's when I'm gonna be having my majority of my carbs is that post-workout. So I will have either some white rice, I will have uh, some oatmeal, uh, and then some like chicken breast. I'm a big fan of uh, chicken. I like fish as well, but not as much as I do chicken. So I, I'll have about maybe like five to six ounces of chicken and then some, uh, you know, fast absorbing carbs, which would be like white rice. <sighs> All right, let's get this uh, fourth set in here. And then the last set will be that double drop set. Let's go. <sighs> drop. Another eight reps. So now the next set be the extremely hard one. The double drop set. So uh, each workout, I will change it up. Some days I'll start off with a barbell press and then certain days I will start off with dumbbell. I uh, find that I like dumbbell press a little bit better because I feel like I can get a better range of motion. So I'm able to go in a little bit more. Uh, and then go down, stretch down as far down as what I need. Barbell, I don't know, because your hands are fixed, I don't feel like I get that full range of motion, so I just like dumbbells just a little bit better. YouTube asks, how do you feel about creatine HCL, and what type of creatine do you prefer? Creatine, there's all different types of creatine out there. Uh, I feel that it really, honestly, doesn't really matter what kind, as long as you're getting uh, significant dose. I, uh, I typically use a uh, creatine monohydrate, take about five grams post-workout. Another supplement question. Um, 
how much protein, uh, grams of protein for a beginner do you recommend? And are supplements necessary for beginners? All right, so for a beginner, I would say about a gram, start off with a gram of protein per pound of body weight. You really don't need to go much more than that. I go for my particular, uh, you know, I've been working out for years and stuff. I do about a gram point, like two to three. So, uh, but a beginner, you know, you just start off with like uh, a gram per pound of body weight. So if you, you know, weigh 160 pounds, go for about 160 grams of protein a day. Uh, and then, you know, that nothing, nothing too crazy. And you don't, you know, protein is one of those things that you're going to get throughout your diet. A good protein powder helps boost that because a lot of, pro a lot of people have problems getting enough protein in their diet uh, from eating like chicken and stuff. So protein powder is a great way to just take a, you know, protein shake when you're working and stuff. Uh, because a lot of times you don't have that time to go make you some chicken or get you fish uh, throughout your day. So a protein shake, you can just you mix it up and chug it, and that is a great way to get in uh, your protein. Other supplements and stuff, I mean, you can do it without it, but supplements do have a purpose. They do help. All right, well, enough procrastinating. Let's, let's do this last, uh, last set here of the press. So the hundreds, I'm gonna go for the six, four to six reps, pretty heavy, and then start the drop. Now the drop, I wanna keep it uh, during each drop, just go to failure, but I wanna keep the rest periods between dropping this weight and picking the other ones up and starting about 15 to 20 seconds. Just enough to kinda of get my, my air back, really. I typically put on a weight belt throughout uh, shoulder press just to keep my lower back kind of straighter, but not today. Right in between, I hit five. All right. Another drop set. So I'm gonna go from the hundreds to the seventies. Just get as many reps as I can physically do. As you can see, I did a couple of partials at the end of it, just to further deplete those muscles. Okay, that was one drop. Let's do the second drop. Let's go with, let's go with the 50s here. So instead of doing another drop, I got around like nine reps on here. We're gonna do a pause rest. So what that is, set the dumbbells down, wait for 15 seconds, pick up this exact same weight, go to failure again. it for press. Now we have the graveyard of dumbbells laying everywhere. Next, we're going to move on to dumbbell side raises. I already have the dumbbells over here. I'm going to start off with uh, the 20 pounds and then depending on 
what my strength levels are, probably be going up to the 25s. What I'm really trying to focus on when I'm doing the side raises, I'm gonna start with the dumbbells actually behind me, which is a little bit different, but I feel it keeps constant tension on your shoulders. So I'm gonna have them behind me, and I come up, squeeze up at the top here. I have a slight bend in my elbows. My arms aren't completely straight out. You wanna have a slight bend. So starting back here, come straight up, squeezing the whole time, trying to keep tension on that muscle. YouTube would like to know how long your cutting periods are and is cutting for two months okay? How long are my cutting uh, periods? Now, depending on how much body fat I have, honestly, it depends on how uh, you know, my off season was. Uh, I like to typically stay under 10 to 12% body fat year round. So I don't have an off season like a lot of huge bodybuilders and stuff where they just go way overboard. I like to stay where I have abs year round. So I don't have to go on a crazy long uh, cutting. Uh, I will do it typically uh, cutting phase for about eight to 10 weeks and then that will give me enough time to get as lean as I wanna be and then I'll maintain that physique for months at a time. But I don't have to go on you know, two to three months. It's fine if you need to do that. You can go on a cutting for that long, completely fine if you need to do that. But for me, because I stay lean pretty much you know, year round, leaner, then I don't have to go on a very long cut. Edwin from YouTube says, hi Abel, not gaining any weight for the last three months. Any tips for breaking that plateau? Uh, yeah, man. Uh, so if you're hitting a plateau and you're not gaining any weight, you need to look at everything. If you're not tracking your nutrition, get an app. I use my fitness pal. Track everything you're eating to know what you're getting. Because if you don't know what your macros are, if you don't know how many calories you're eating a day, how do you know how to adjust it? So that's the first thing I tell people. Learn what your calories are. Learn how much you're eating. So you might be thinking you're eating plenty of calories, but if you sit down and actually track it, you will find that you're either eating way too less or you're eating more than what you should be. So I would recommend tracking it and then change up your workouts. Get on bodybuilding.com, get a program, change it, change it up. Whatever you're doing right now, uh, you know, you need to adjust something because you, like you said, you hit a plateau. So either work out harder or find a different program, adjust it somehow. Um, but there's all, way, all kinds of different ways to do that, either your nutrition or your workouts. All right, let's go with the side raises now. So like I said, starting off behind me, going up, squeeze up at the top. This, we're gonna be doing four sets of 12 reps, but I'm only gonna demonstrate two because of time's sake. So if you're gonna be doing this workout, bump the sets up to four sets. And as you can see, I'm trying to pause just a tad bit up at the top, just to get that extra squeeze. So the wrong way would be, you're sitting here just swinging it. You don't wanna do that. You wanna keep constant tension on those shoulders. Ah, ah, whoo. So I'm gonna rest for about 60 seconds during these sets. The people wanna know uh, what the benefits of drop sets are. Benefits of drop sets. So uh, the benefit is just to fatigue that muscle. Uh, I wouldn't suggest doing drop sets on your of course on your very first set because you're gonna burn out those muscles too soon. I like to do like the drop sets at the last set of that exercise. So as you saw, I did four sets of just normal reps. So going for, you know, those eight to 10 reps. And then on the last set, I did the burnout because if you do the burnout set one, you're not gonna be able to push the same amount of weight uh, that you could if you save those drop sets for later on. And drop sets help to, uh, you know, get blood into those muscles. From Twitch, Tommy Nation Time wants to know, do you worry about shoulder uh, impingement with the dumbbells being behind the shoulder? Tommy, uh, 
Yeah, I mean, there's different research on that as far as, you know, what's the best way of doing it. I change it up. Sometimes I will go from the front of me. Sometimes I'll go in the back, just depending on how your shoulders feel. Certain people can do different exercises and it doesn't hurt one person, but the next person it would just because how their flexibility are, you know, is how well, uh, you know, they can do an exercise. Same thing with squatting. Some people are able to, you know, go down in a squat a little bit better. Uh, the mobility and that some people can't so it just depends on who you are if you're doing these dumbbells behind you and you feel it don't do it just go normal dot dumbbell side raises that's completely fine uh, for me I feel that doing it behind me I can feel the stretch a little bit more and, and I feel that it keeps constant tension on those shoulders all right so the second set here let's go for this I got the 25s now Ah. 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 And as you can see, I'm still doing partials. So even at the end where I can't go all the way up, I'm just going into complete failure even with the partials. Uh, still keeping good form though. I'm not at the partials just using tons of lower back and stuff where I can hurt myself. I'm still keeping you know, that form, but I'm just going up as high as I can and squeezing the whole time. So next, we're gonna move on to the cable. We're gonna do cable leaning side raises. Uh, this, I love this exercise for shoulders. Uh, I love using the cables for shoulders and leaning out because, you know, with dumbbells, you kind of lose tension down at the bottom a little bit because, you know, the angle. But with cable, if you're leaning out this way, you're gonna keep constant tension on those shoulders. So I'm gonna lower this. This would be uh, four sets of 12 reps as well. But for the sake of time, I'm just gonna demonstrate two sets. Eddie from YouTube would like to know uh, if you will be auditioning for the next Captain America. Oh gosh. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not gonna, that, that movie's already been filmed and stuff. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for another character. <laughs> no. <laughs> and Facebook would like to know uh, how your macros are divided up, percentages. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, uh, it depends right now. I'm trying to lose body fat, so getting ready for photo shoots and stuff, my macros uh, change throughout the year. Right now, I'm doing something called carb cycling. So if you don't know what that is, you can do some research on it because I'm sure we don't have time to go into it. But I'm going two days, very low carbs, just vegetable carbs, so about 50 carbs and below. And then on that third day, I will have carbs anywhere from 200 to 300 carbs just to get my energy levels back up there. And on the low carb days, I have higher fats. And on the high carb days, I'm having low fat. So the calories basically stay the same. The only thing that changes up are the macros. And I find that is the best way for me to lose body fat and, uh, and energy purposes. Because the main thing that I focus on when I'm dieting is energy because I want energy to work out hard when I'm in the gym. All right, so let's go into this exercise. I like to step over the cable. So my legs, the cable is in between my legs here. Uh, it, for whatever reason, feels better on my shoulder. So I'm gonna lean out, I'm gonna go up, pause for a split second, squeeze. <sighs> Ah. That was 12. Swap the sides from here. Straight out. Now during this exercise uh, and these last few sets and stuff, 
you don't have to rest as long either. So uh, this one doesn't take as much out of you as doing like a press. So I'd rest somewhere probably around 45 to 50 seconds in between these sets. So some of our all access users are wondering um, if they're gonna get a training program from you on bodybuilding.com anytime. Yes, so the program uh, we're filming actually this week, I have a full 30 day ab program coming out and it will be detailed with diet and my ab training because if you want abs, you have to work them pretty hard to develop them. So we do have that coming. And Jessica on Facebook would like to know if you listen to music when you work out. Music, yes, I listen to a lot of music during work, uh, workouts. Uh, helps me get in the zone. Uh, you know, some people said they can get in the zone just fine without music. Uh, I can, I can work out with music, but it just helps me that much more. Kind of like a good pre-workout. It gets me going and then when I get my song, you know, it helps me get out a few more reps and stuff. I like to listen to like trap music. Just anything to get me going, rock music. Anything but country music. I absolutely hate country music. And you would think I would like it because I grew up in Mississippi and Texas, but cannot stand it. All right, let's get done with this next set here. So that was the last set that I'm going to demonstrate of the cable side raises because it's uh, time's sake. But if you're going to do this workout, do all four sets. <sighs> I'm checking out the rest of the workout here. I wrote it all down, but when you start to work out and stuff, all the blood leaves your head. All right, next we're going to go into cable rope front raises. So we're going to be hitting the front delts again. So I'm going to swap up this to the rope and standing over it, we're gonna do standing front raises. This is not all about the weight. This is gonna be more of the feel. So don't worry about the weight on there. All you're doing is going up, squeezing the whole time. That mind muscle connection, time under tension here. Don't go all the way down where you're touching. You don't want to lose tension. You want to stop about right here. So wherever, right before it touches, that's where you want to be. Ah. 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 That was set one of four. And Facebook would like to know how to build muscle when injured. How to build muscle while injured. It depends on what injury you have. Uh, if you, know, you injured your leg, you can still go to the gym and work uh, you know, upper body, uh, you know, vice versa. If you, uh, you know, hurt like your chest and stuff, you can still work certain parts of the body. So though, you have to let yourself heal but you can still work around it. I've had many injuries throughout my career and I've always found a way to actually work around it. So if my back's hurt, I will do you know, arms and legs or if my leg is hurt, I'll focus on upper body. Uh, you have to do what you gotta do. I mean, sometimes you have those injuries and stuff, you just gotta work around them. Uh, I'm not one of those people that just sit at home if I got an injury and not work out at all. No, you'll never see me do that. I will somehow get to the gym and work around those injuries. And YouTube would like to know, um, should I work out when I'm hungry? Whew, should you work out when you're hungry? Uh, I 
typically don't go to the gym and work out and lift weights and stuff without having a meal in me. Uh, now when I'm traveling, that's a little bit different. I have to do what I gotta do sometimes. So if I wake up at five in the morning to work out, uh, I don't have a meal in me. But ideal, I would like to have a meal in me at least and then go work out. But I will do cardio uh, in the mornings on an empty stomach uh, besides taking BCA. So if I get up in the morning to do cardio, I will take a scoop of amino build or something just to help preserve that muscle and a little bit of caffeine as well just to get me going but besides that uh, you know if I'm gonna go lift weights I will uh, recommend you having a meal just because it's gonna help with energy uh, because a lot of times early in the morning or you know if you don't eat something you feel drained and you want to have the best workouts possible all right next set here Last set, and like I said, I'm just demonstrating two, but I want you doing four sets. Partials. Ah. All right, so after hitting the front delts a lot, now we're gonna move on to the rear delts. I believe we have reverse flies on this uh, cable machine. So I'm gonna raise up the cable machines. We're gonna be doing four sets of 12 reps, super set with face pulls uh, with the rope. So I'm gonna raise this other one up. Uh, about to the highest point. Take off this rope right now. Have it right here. Raise this one up. So the first one I'm gonna do facing y'all. And then the next set that I do I'm gonna have my back towards y'all so you can see what I'm doing here. But I'm gonna cross up the cables here. Uh, the weight is not too heavy, pretty light. I'm gonna be going for 12 to 15 reps. This is all about the feel. If you go too heavy, you might, you're gonna be throwing a lot more back into the movement. So you're gonna be using a lot of like back, doing a row, you don't want that. You wanna go into a reverse fly, so you're using those rear delts. So just cross them up. Here, locked arms, and you're just flying straight back. Squeezing. Now, don't go too far back. You just wanna get your elbows, I guess, parallel with your torso or your body. Squeeze. Then you're going to attach the rope onto this thing. Lower the weight, make it a little bit heavier. You're going to pull that rope out. You're going to grab and pull it out and squeeze. Here, pull, squeeze. You don't want this. I see a lot of people going to the gym doing them and they're doing something like this. That's a row, that's gonna be working your back. You wanna be working your rear delt. So you gotta pull up to your forehead or your nose and pull that rope apart and squeeze. Which is back up, get it ready for the next set. So Twitch asks, what are your thoughts on rest pause sets? Rest pause sets. So you just saw me with the press. If you're watching earlier, I did a rest pause. I love doing them. Uh, that way you're able to get in a few more uh, reps uh, using the same amount of weight. So what a rest pause is, uh, you go to failure and then you set down the weight you rest for around 
10 to 15 seconds, you pick up that exact same amount of weight, weight and then you go at it again for as many reps as you can do. Uh, I like doing that where if I'm hitting around, you know, my goal is around 10, 10 reps. Uh, and then when, you know, you could start off with the weight, let's say I started off with the 90s, uh, going for 10 reps. Now by the fourth set, I'm not able to get those 10 reps anymore. So I might be going around eight reps. Now on the fourth set, if I'm not able to get those 10, I'll set them down, rest for 10 to 15 seconds, go back at it and try to get those other two reps. So I'm still getting those 10 reps. I'm just taking a rest pause in between. What is your favorite flavor of protein? Favorite flavor of protein? I would have to say it's the Muscle Tech Nitro Tech 100% Whey Gold, and it is it is a funnel cake flavor. They have it here on Bodybuilding.com, but it's vanilla funnel cake. It sounds very different, but it is insane good. It is my favorite flavor by far. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to be facing the other way so you can see my back and my rear delts here. So like I said, keep your arms locked where you're not here, but keep them locked until fly, squeezing when you go back. This exercise is probably my favorite exercise for rear delts. I feel it so much. A lot of the times with dumbbells and stuff, I mean, I feel it, but this one just really seems to target that muscle a whole lot if you're doing it right. And again, I'm not letting the weight rest at the bottom. You go, set it down. No, I don't want that. I want to keep tension that whole time squeezing. All right. Uh, what does your weekly split look like? Do you do both heavy and lightweight? and how many times a day or week do you train? Whew, so that changes up. Uh, that changes up daily for me. It depends on what my body feel like, feels like. Uh, certain days I'm sore, so if I go in there uh, on, let's say, a Monday, and my goal is to hit legs, and I'm sore from, let's say, you know, Thursday's workout or Friday's workout doing legs, I will switch it up. So I don't really have a set day that I work a muscle group, I just go by feel. So if I feel like, you know, my chest can get a good workout in, I'll do chest. Now I like to break it up where at least three days, uh, you know, I haven't worked that muscle in those three day period to give myself enough recovery time. I worked out every single day besides one day a week. So I take normally Sundays off. And uh, if I'm taking Sundays off, that's when I go do like an active uh, rest day. So I'll do either go hiking or canoeing or walking or something like that. So I, I'm still doing some type of exercise. It's just not high intensity and it's not lifting weight just to give my body a little break. Uh, but I used to, back in the day, never, I didn't take a day off. I worked, worked out every single day. And I, you know, after the years and years of doing that, it's just too much. You need your body to recover. I mean, that's, that's a big thing. If you want to grow, it's got to recover. Do you mix up your grip or hand position during the face pulls? Mix up my grip. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can mix up the grip. You can go from like an underhand grip or overhand. Um, I feel it works best with going, you know, the overhand grip like that and then pulling apart. I've seen people do it all different ways, like even like a neutral grip, you know, grabbing the cable and pulling out. But with the rope, I like going overhand. I just feel it works that rear delt 
you know, a little bit more, and I feel it engage a whole lot more. So let's see, the last exercise we have is going to be a reverse dumbbell fly. I'm going to do this uh, bent over, so I'm going to be sitting down uh, on this bench. I'm going to be grabbing, let's see, I guess the 25s. So I'm just going to have my legs straight out in front of me here. Bend forward. There's dumbbells right here. Going straight back, squeezing. I want y'all doing four sets of these for around that 12 rep mark. So here we go. Squeeze up at the top. And then you'll see me do this, but I'm going a little bit forward here. So I'm not going straight out to the side because if I was going straight out to the side, you're going to be hitting a whole lot more back. I want to go a little bit, you know, in front of me, just a tad to hit those rear delts more. So set one, and then I'm gonna demonstrate set uh, two, but the, uh, I want you doing four, like I said, but on the last set, the four set, I want you to do a drop set, and that's what I'm gonna demonstrate on the last one. So I'm gonna go from the 25s to the 20s, and just go to failure on both of those. Um, Tony from Finland says hello, and wants to know if you take creatine every day, uh, and if so, do you cycle every four to five weeks off? What's up, man? So do I cycle creatine? Do I take it every day? Yes, I've been taking creatine for years now without cycling off. All the research and stuff says you do not have to cycle. You get creatine already naturally in meats. Uh, so if you're having like steak and stuff, you can get your creatine, but it's not necessarily enough. And there's tons of research. Creatine is one of the most researched supplements in the world. I mean, that's uh, that and protein powder, of course, but uh, creatine, all the, all the stuff done on it, it's completely safe and I, you know, don't really recommend cycling off. There's just no point in cycling, cycling off the creatine. And are dumbbells or barbells better for pressing movements? For pressing movements. So I went over that a little bit beforehand, uh, talking about uh, barbell and uh, dumbbell. The difference, for me, I feel the difference is just the range, range of motion. I will switch it up, so certain days I'll do a barbell press uh, and then a dumbbell, but doing like bench press for like chest and shoulders, I feel that dumbbell you're able to uh, get a better range of motion because you're able to squeeze and go in a little bit more. With the bar, you're fixed, so that's all you can do. You can't bring your arms in or out because it's just fixed. So for me, I personally think that dumbbells are you know a little bit better, but that being said, I do rotate uh, back and forth. Favorite uh, normal or clean meals versus your favorite cheat meals? Favorite cheat meals and favorite clean meals. All right, so favorite cheat meals, I would have to say are pizza and burgers, the typical you know bodybuilding way. You have to have a good burger and pizza, but then pancakes. I'm a big breakfast person. I could eat breakfast foods any time of day. I just love pancakes, waffles, and all that stuff. So. Anytime I go on a, like a long diet phase, I'm cr I crave breakfast foods for whatever reason. I crave like a big stack of pancakes. So that for me is like, you know, that's it. I love that stuff. Uh, for dieting, um, I mean, golly, oatmeal tastes amazing in the mornings and stuff or in the afternoons whenever I have it. Oatmeal tastes great. Uh, then, of course, you know, chicken and stuff gets kind of boring, but you just have to season it and stuff correctly. Uh, and then a steak and salmon, uh, salmon is delicious. So anytime I'm on a hard prep, I like to go get a very nice steak, cook it up, or salmon, uh, you know, cook it up because it tastes delicious because it's a little bit higher fat content in that. And, you know, when you're not used to that on a diet, it's just really good. So I'll have like steak and, you know, some kind of good fish like once a week during like a cut uh, just to give my life a little bit more flavor. So let's go ahead and do this last set. This will be this drop set.
So go to failure, pick up the next set of dumbbells, and then go at it again. And then partials to finish out. Woo. And that was the shoulders complete. Woo. Estefania would like to know the best exercises for triceps. Best exercises for triceps. Ooh, that's a hard one because there's so many different exercises that you can do for triceps. My favorite ones would be uh, on a flat bench doing skull crushers uh, because you're able to go pretty heavy. So I would consider that one of the you know, bread and butter workouts to a tricep workout. So doing the skull crusher because you're able to go you know, pretty heavy weight in there. And then of course, like doing like rope push downs where you're squeezing, putting, you know, pulling that rope apart at the bottom. Uh, those would probably be my two favorite uh, tricep movements. Rosario from YouTube would like to know how tall you are and how much you weigh right now and during competition. Okay, uh, so right, right now, like I change in height, no. <laughs> I am 5'10", uh, and then right now leaning down and stuff for like a photo shoot and stuff, uh, like 185. The off season, uh, so during my off season, I get to about 195, so about 10 pounds off of what I, you know, do photo shoots. Now, competition, I would have to get leaner. So uh, for a contest, I'd probably be about 180 to 175 if I was just, you know, really shredded. Uh, but yeah, basically I'm like 185. And John from Facebook would like to know, is it best to take creatine before or after workouts? Um, good question. It really doesn't matter, honestly, as long as you're getting that five grams of creatine a day. Uh, a lot of pre-workouts have creatine in it, but it's like in smaller dosage. So it's going to be like maybe a gram and a half. Uh, so, you know, I'll take a pre-workout and then after the workout, I will take the rest. So I'll take about another five grams after the workout, but it really doesn't matter when you take it as long as you're getting in uh, around that five grams a day. And do you always use every dumbbell in the gym? I <laughs> do always use every dumbbell. Yes, every single dumbbell in the gym is mine during my workouts. <laughs> now, I do do a lot of drop sets. So this is a typical, if I left all my weights out in the gym, this would be a typical day for me. But of course, I'm not going to be one of those guys in the gym that just leaves the dumbbells out. I re-rack them every time. But I do do a lot of drop sets. All right, Twitch would like to know if a bro deadlifts in the woods, but no one was around to see him PR, did he even lift? Do what? <laughs> was that even a question? What? <laughs> All right, and where can people find you on social? Yeah, yeah, what? I did not get that. <laughs> where can you be found on social? All right, guys, so if you want to follow me over on my social media, you can find me over on Facebook and YouTube at Abel Abinetti. And then on Instagram, you can find me at Abel Body Gym. So, yeah, guys, follow me over there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got something out of this. If you want to give this workout a try, all of the, the whole workout is actually in the description uh, down below. And again, if you want to get some good products right now, uh, Muscle Tech. And bodybuilding.com has a sale on their protein. It's buy two, get one free of the Muscle Tech Nitro Tech Whey Gold. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you all next time.